physiological changes during pregnancy. In this part, we will see the physiological changes in the respiratory system, the endocrine, the skeleton, the skin, central nervous system, and eye. Let us start from the respiratory system. So, if you see the upper respiratory tract, the mucosa of the nasopharynx becomes hyperemic and edematous with increased mucus production. This is mainly because of the increased estrogen level during pregnancy. This change results in marked nasal stiffness and decreased nasal patency. Because of these physiological changes, 27% of the pregnant women report nasal congestion and rhinitis in tw at 12 weeks of gestation. This number will increase to 42% at 36 weeks of gestation. The use of nasal decongestant is not advisable uh, because of increased risk of hypertension and uh, recurrent uh, nasal congestion. And because of the decreased nasal patency, there is a difficulty of intubations because of increased malapathy score. Epistaxis is also common during pregnancy but rarely requires surgical management. And the bed, we need to consider when you insert a negative to the pregnant woman, we need to have adequate lubricant. Otherwise, we will end up the bleeding. Polyposis of the nose and the nasal sinus develop in some pregnant woman, but it resolves after delivery. So if you see the mechanical changes, the configuration of the thoracic cage changes early in pregnancy, which was manifested as uh, subcostal angle is increased to 103 degrees. The transverse diameter of the chest is increased by two centimeters and the chest circumference is increased by five to seven centimeters. This, is, this change is mainly because of the relaxation of the ligamentous attachment between the rib and the sternum. As the pregnancy progressed, the level of the diaphragm elevated by four centimeters and the diaphragmatic excursion is also increased by one to two centimeters. The respiratory muscle function is not affected during pregnancy. So let us see the lung volume and the pulmonary functions. Elevation of the diaphragm decreases the total lung capacity and functional residual capacity. The forced expiratory volume in one second doesn't change during pregnancy and the pulmonary functions in twin pregnancy is the same as that of the singlet and there is no significant difference between. The lung compliance is not affected. So the summary of the lung function and the I mean, the lung volume and the, the pulmonary functions will be explained on the next table. So let, let us see one by one. So the total lung capacity is defined as the total amount of air in the lungs at maximum inspiration. It is decreased by 5%. In some studies show that it, it remains unchanged during pregnancy. So functional residual capacity, the amount of air in the lung at resting expiratory volume, it is, it is decreased by 20 to 30 percent. So the tidal volume, the amount of air inspired and expired with normal breeze, and it is increased by 20 to 30 percent. So the other is a gas exchange. Increased progesterone level drive a state of chronic hyperventilation during pregnancy. This chronic hyperventilation is reflected by 30 to 50 percent increase in tidal volume at eight weeks of gestation. The minute ventilation is also increased during pregnancy because of raised tidal volume, but the respiratory rate is, remains unchanged during pregnancy. Alveolar ventilation also increased by 50 to 70 percent due to rise in minute ventilation and the decreased functional residual capacity. The chronic mild hyperventilation during pregnancy will increase the alveolar oxygenation and the decreased partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the maternal blood. The drop in partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the maternal blood is critical to facilitate carbon dioxide transfer from the fetus by creating a favorable carbon dioxide gradient between the mother and the fetus. The low maternal partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the arterial blood results in the chronic respiratory alkalosis, which is compensated by uh, renal excretion of bicarbonate to make the arterial uh, blood pH between 7.4 and 7.45. Early pregnancy, partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood also increased to 106 to 180 millimeter of mercury, but in later in pregnancy, it dropped to 101 to 104 because of enlarged uterus. Maternal oxygen consumption also increased by 20 to 40% during pregnancy. This 
is mainly because of the increased oxygen requirement by the fetus and the placenta and also increased oxygen requirement by the maternal mm, organs. There is a low maternal oxygen reserve during pregnancy. This decreased oxygen reserve during pregnancy is due to increased maternal oxygen requirement in the decreased functional residual capacity. Because of this decreased oxygen reserve, the pregnant women are susceptible to the apneic effects, especially at the time of intubation. And also, the desaturation time after sorrow pre-oxygenation was dropped from 9 minutes in non-pregnant women to 3 minutes during pregnancy. So we need to take care of this apneic effect while intubation because of these physiological changes. So let us see the sleep pattern. Beginning early, as early as 12 weeks of gestation and extending through the first uh, two months postpartum, a woman have a difficulty in failing sleep, uh, frequent awakening, a fewer hours of night sleep, and reduced sleep efficacy. This change is especially common in the postpartum period, which predispose pregnant, uh, I mean postpartum ladies for postpartum blue and psychosis. So, let us see the endocrine changes during pregnancy. We will focus mainly on the thyroid and the, the uh, pituitary gland. Okay, so let us see the thyroid gland. The size of the thyroid gland remains unchanged if iodine uh, supplementation is remains normal. But in the state of iodine deficiency, the thyroid gland is the size of the thyroid gland is increased by 25 to 30 percent during pregnancy. During pregnancy, the maternal iodine level is decreased. This is mainly because of increased iodine excretion by the kidney as well as fetal requirement of the kidney later in pregnancy. Iodine intake should be increased by from 100 mg per day to 150 to 200 mg per day. This is a WHO's recommendation. Uh, the total T4 and the total T3 level begin to increase in the first trimester and the peak in a mid gestation. This is mainly because of increased hepatic production of tyroxine binding globulin. The tyroxine binding globulin increased in the first trimester and peaks at mid gestation. After mid gestation, it becomes plateau. There is also a transient decrease in thyroid stimulating hormone and there is a transient increase in free T4 level in the first trimester of pregnancy. This is mainly because of the thyrotropic effect of HCG. As you know, human, human coronic gonadotropin production is peak in the first trimester and human coronic gonadotropin and thyroid stimulating hormones share alpha subunit because of these structural similarities, human coronic gonadotropin has uh, stimulate TSH receptor so that the free T3 production that will suppress TSH production. In some pregnant women, there is a transient gestational thyrotoxicosis. These women, those who develop transient gestational thyrotoxicosis have high level of HCG production. For example, those, of, those with twin pregnancy and molar pregnancy will have this. Mainly it was the laboratory abnormalities, otherwise there was no significant clinical manifestations. T4 <coughs> crosses the placenta and in early pregnancy, the fetus is critically dependent on the maternal T4 level for neurologic development. Even this T4 transfer across the placenta is continued throughout the pregnancy, even until term. At term, the maternal T4 accounts 30% of the fetal thyroxine, okay? So, human fetus cannot synthesize thyroid hormone uh, before 12 weeks of gestation. So, before 12 weeks of gestation, it is dependent on the maternal thyroxine. TSH does not cross the placenta and it has not direct effect on the fetus. Thyrotropin releasing hormone level do not rise during pregnancy, but it crosses the placenta and uh, stimulates the fetal pituitary gland to secrete TSH. And uh, some studies show that thyrotropin releasing hormone have some effect on the fetal lung maturation. <clears throat> so let us see the pituitary gland. During pregnancy, the pituitary gland increased by 135%. Anterior pituitary gland hormones level are significantly affected, especially the serum prolactin level is raised starting from five to eight weeks of gestation and at term, 10 times higher. Mainly, this function is to prepare the breast for lactation. The maternal FSH and LH is decreased to undetectable level. And the growth hormone is also increased because of uh, the placental production. 
the hormone produced by posterior pituitary gland also altered and the oxytocin level is increased throughout the pregnancy and it peaks in the second stage of labor so let us see the skeleton calcium metabolism the maternal total calcium level decline during pregnancy these are due to the three reasons one because of increased renal excretion second because of the fetal requirement is increased later in pregnancy third because of decreased serum level of albumin which binds to the calcium even though the total calcium is decreased the serum iodized calcium is unchanged during pregnancy which is physiologically important the fetus accumulate around 21 gram of calcium throughout the pregnancy as we know calcium is actively transported across the placenta and 80 percent of this accumulation occurred in the third trimester the fetal calcium needs are mainly dependent mainly need the need is mainly met by increased intestinal calcium absorption and at some extent calcium resorption from the maternal bone occurs but mainly it is it is need is met by increasing maternal calcium absorption calcium of calcium is absorbed from the small intestine and its absorption is doubled at 12 weeks of gestation and it is maximum at the third trimester the level of 125 dihydroxy vitamin d the active form is increased during pregnancy it is level doubled in the first trimester and the peak in the third trimester which facilitates it plays an important role to increase the maternal intestinal calcium absorption this increment is due to maternal kidney production and the production by veto placental unit this increment is independent of parathyroid hormone control but the inactive form of vitamin D is unchanged unless vitamin D intake and the synthesis is changed. Calcitonin level also increased during pregnancy to protect excessive maternal bone loss. Maternal serum phosphate levels are unchanged and the parathyroid hormone level remains normal. I mean the low normal range throughout the pregnancy. Skeletal change and postural change. Pregnancy is a period of bone turnover and remodeling. Both pregnancy and lactations cause reversible bone loss. And this bone loss is marked in a woman who breastfeed for a long period of time. And the bone turnover is low in the first half of the pregnancy. And it is peak in the third trimester, which corresponds to high fetal calcium requirement. There is no association between parity and osteoporosis later in pregnancy. Although there is a bone loss occurs in pregnancy, the occurrence of osteoporosis soon after pregnancy is rare. So pregnancy results in progressive increasing anterior curvature of the lumbar spine. It causes lordosis. This is a compensatory mechanism that keeps the woman's center of gravity over the leg. This causes uh, pain over the lower back, which radiates to the inner thigh. There is also the relaxation of the symphysis pubis and the sacroiliac joint during pregnancy. So let us see the skin, hair, nail changes during pregnancy. In the skin, there is increased cutaneous blood flow, which causes heat, blowing of it, which we call it as a glow of pregnancy. Hyperpigmentation is observed in 90% of the women. This hyperpigmentation is commonly occurred in the linea negra, nipple, areola over the labia minora, over the scar in the, in the face causing the mask of pregnancy. The spider angioma and the palmar erythema can also occur because of elevated estrogen level, steria gravidarum, because of increased intra-abdominal pressure, stretching the skin collagens. Many women also notice that the hair of stism and the thickening of the scalp hair during pregnancy is commonly shed one to five months postpartum. During pregnancy, the nail also becomes brittleness, transverse grooving in the distal oncomycin, and the other changes can also occur in the nail during pregnancy. So, central nervous system. CNS changes are relatively few and mostly subtle. Some women report that problem of attention, concentration in the memory throughout the pregnancy and the, in the postpartum period. But studies found that Pregnancy-related memory decline was limited in the third trimester of pregnancy, and these changes are not related to anxiety, sleep deprivation, 
then the depression and the other change other body changes during pregnancy decreased brain size in the healthy woman were occurs in the course of pregnancy it was reported by the volumetric mri but the cause of this change and uh, this clinical significance is not known when you see the eye pregnancy is associated with ocular changes most of them are transient but the two most significant ocular changes during pregnancy is increase the thickness of the cornea and decrease the intraocular pressure the thickness of cornea it starts to appear at 10 weeks of gestation and persists for several weeks postpartum concomitantly occurred with visual changes intraocular pressure fell by 10 percent during pregnancy which results in resolution of the pregnant woman having glaucoma prior to the pregnancy and also on the brownish red opacities on the posterior surface of the cornea can also occur so thank you for watching so don't forget to subscribe my channel to have more videos so give us your comment your feedback and any questions on the comment part thank you